I thank the chairman for yielding. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I do rise today in support of H.R. 1217, the bill that, as we've already heard, repeals the public health slush fund that was included in the Patient Protection Affordable Care Act passed just a little over a year ago. This fund, called the Public Health Fund, is almost $18 billion that accounts for the next eight fiscal years. And the Secretary of Health and Human Services gets to spend this money on any program that he or she deems worthy. The money, what the money will be used for and how it will be used essentially is an unknown. Neither this Congress nor subsequent Congresses have any earthly idea, and it is yet once again an abdication of our authority here in the United States Congress, an abdication of power in deference to the executive branch. And if that's what people think we were sent here to do, to simply carve off greater and greater pieces of our authority and hand it over to the White House, I, I, I hope that I'm wrong in that, but it seems like over and over again with the health care bill, with the financial reg bill, it seems like that is the mantra here. It does put way too much discretion in the hands of the Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services. You know, we've got a predicted shortfall in the nation's health care provider workforce. Some of this money is going to go for scholarships, but it sets up a big problem. Under the Public Health Fund, some of those same students could receive a scholarship for one year only to find that the secretary has bigger and better things to spend it on next year. Maybe there's a new bike path that needs a sign and that student would find their education unfunded because all of the discretion rests with the secretary. Now, just a moment ago, the, the ranking member of the full committee stood up and said that it seems like all the Republicans want to do is defund and, and remove the Affordable Care Act. Well, I appreciate him noticing, because, Mr. Speaker, that is what the election of November 2nd, 2010 was all about. We were elected to come here and do that work for the American people. And the duplication contained within this slush fund. The ranking member spoke, spoke about smoking cessation. That's a good idea. I believe in that. I lost two parents to tobacco-related illness. But wait a minute. What about the duplication when, when, when the ranking member was chairman Last year, last Congress, he created the Center for Tobacco Products at the Food and Drug Administration. We funded that lavishly with a brand new tax. And now we're going to come back and fund it yet again with this public health slush fund? The rank member asked about what programs we wanted to cut. Really, it's a question of do we want to be accountable to the American people who elected us here to do this job? They sent us here to ensure that their money was being spent responsibly and that every penny would be accounted for and justified before being spent. With the current state of the economy, Mr. Speaker, I'm not sure how the American people feel about the Secretary choosing to spend money on signs to direct people to bike paths. I know how they would feel about it in my district. If I could have an additional 30 seconds, Mr. Chairman. I yield the gentleman an additional 30 seconds. The gentleman's recognized 30 seconds. In this law that was signed in the East Room of the White House just a little over a year ago, Section 4002 takes from Congress the oversight of spending and it becomes a blank check for the Secretary to do with as she wishes without any other input from Congress. By doing that, it takes that authority away from the American people because we are the closest contact the American people have with their federal government. And by taking us out of the equation, guess what, Madam Secretary? You got a blank check. It's all yours. I yield.